All right, all right. Oh man, we gotta fix that. What is up, my friends? Let's see if we can fix that. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it's been a really long time since we did a stream, hey? So uh, yeah, welcome. Let's uh, let's jump in the chat. Who do we got? All right, sweet. Um, and then I, I always open it up for everybody in the community to, uh, to jump on with me. And so you're more than welcome. That link is in the, uh, in the Discord. But I think we'll bring on um, uh, Credit Kid in just a second. Let me get a, uh, let me get a screen up here. So um, real quick, I know that uh, we'll probably have a bunch of people jumping in here as we get rolling. Uh, but we're going to cover, we're gonna cover uh, investing, beginning guide to investing. So I actually um, originally came up with this, this uh, whole idea here and wanted to shoot a video on it back in uh, late 2022, right? And I just never got around to it. And then, you know, as I was collecting the data for it, because, you know, I wanted to talk about inflation, I wanted to talk about interest rates, CD rates, you know, high yield savings accounts, all the all the vehicles that you could possibly imagine. Well, all that stuff changes on a regular basis. So I just thought like, hey, why don't we just do a live stream, right? Um, and it's a common question still that we get asked in inside the community. So if you're not inside the community, what do I mean by that? I'm just meaning the Discord, right? And um we're asked about that all the time. And that's a pretty common question because, you know, as soon as you start getting credit funding, what starts to happen? Well, now I need to do something with it. Right. And, and we need to start thinking like longer term picture and perspective. So um, anyway, I just thought that'd be a fun thing for us to do today. We haven't gone live in a really long time um, and I miss you guys. And so I wanted to hang out too. So let's, let's start with hanging out. Let's give it, let's give it some more time here and, uh, and let some more people jump in. I dropped a link already in the uh, in the Discord. All right, let's pull this up. All right, <clears throat> so yeah, we'll we'll talk about everything. Um, let me let me give you a quick uh, quick agenda rundown. So we'll talk interest rate, inflation. We'll talk uh, high yield savings accounts, CDs. We'll touch on that. Uh, metal stocks, bonds, I bonds, Roth uh, uh, IRAs. So Roth traditionals, backdoors, four hundred one ks. What else? Uh, REITs. I even got some stuff on peer-to-peer -peer loans, but uh, there's not much there. So maybe we'll touch on that a little bit. And then we'll maybe touch on crypto a little bit too because can't can't skip crypto. Um, all right, cool. So let's um, let's bring on the credit kid. What's up, man? Yo, you there? I got you. Uh, real quick in the chat. Uh, can you guys hear me? In the chat, can you guys hear me? Let's just double check this. Because maybe my maybe my stuff is wrong here. <laughs> been, a, been a hot minute since we streamed. Okay. And then, oh, if you guys want to do me a big favor, here's here's what I want. Here's what I want is if you've got a uh, YouTube channel, then take the link to this stream and share it on your community tab. So I saw something the uh, like a week ago or something. Uh, from like a exploit channel, a channel that's constantly talking about like funny, funny things that are broken within YouTube. And so one of them supposedly is that if if other people post or if anybody posts your um, your stream on their community tab, like as a as a post, it auto plays. So that's one of the one of the pieces that they that they were talking about. So, anyways, if you guys wanna if you guys wanna help us out, get the numbers pumped up, then go ahead and do that. Uh, all right, let's see if. Uh, all right, I got you added. Yeah, All right. yeah. You yes, sir. There he is. Yeah, what's going on, bud? I'm happy to be on with you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to hear what you got to say, man. All right, cool. Cool, cool, man. Um, yeah, it's it's been a while since uh since we did a stream. Uh and we just crossed over fifteen thousand subscribers. So I guess I guess we've got a little bit to celebrate too, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, man. I'm not. I'm not too big on investing. Cause I just got into like my career and stuff, so I'm, I'm excited to hear what you got to say about, and you know, <clears throat> some tricks you got. Go, on, go. On. Yeah, let's do it. So, um, what I'll do is, uh, let's get rolling, and then uh, I'll just mute you out, and then just unmute if you want to just jump in. Like, I'd love that. That'd be great. Cause um, this kind of gets boring just doing this by yourself. Cause I mean, if, if we just take a big step back for everybody watching, it is kind of weird. Like I'm in a room by myself talking to myself. <laughs> so like I, I do much better when there's, when there's people around, uh, I just got to say that. So, all right, cool. You're muted. 
All right, so let's rock and roll. Uh, this is everything that we're going to cover. This is actually a lot of this. I'm going to just break down pages from uh, this course that we've got called the Bulletproof Portfolio. Cool. You guys can see that. Great. Uh, this is just one of the many courses that uh, we sell. Yes, we have products to sell. Uh, this is one of them. And you get this if you join the um, Master the Credit Game product. So actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here because let's do this. Let's get this going. Let's drop our intro real quick. All right. Now we can officially start. Uh, all right. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get that out of the way. All right. Uh, interest rates. So first off, investing is is not really a sexy topic, right? Um, because I think a lot of people are are really scared of um, of getting into it, just because you know it's it's like shrouded in mystery. It's shrouded as this thing that's incredibly difficult to do. So when people start getting money, the last thing they think about is investing. The first thing, and, and it depends on how you're born and raised, right? But the first thing that we're constantly thinking about is how to go and spend this money, right? So let's say you just get a big get a big lick, get a get a big bag. Um, you're you're thinking like, okay, let's let's go out and get a car. Let's go out and get some bags now. Now that uh, you know designer brands are so popular, now that you know watches are so popular, it's like let's let's go out and get all that stuff. All of that is liabilities. <laughs> all of that is liabilities. That's not assets. Um, we need to be thinking about assets. We need to be thinking like you're you're playing a bunch of different games at once. You're playing this long term game, which is the longest, which is your life. And then you know you can break it down from there. You want to play a seven to ten year window, you know, twelve month window, and the same thing goes for like your goals and aspirations, which is another insanely boring topic. Nobody wants to sit around and talk about goals and goal setting, man. Like even me, I remember, you know, for the longest time, I, I didn't even want to hear this. Um, didn't even want to hear it. And and it's not until you start to realize how true that stuff is, and putting your intention and focus on something that you start to realize that okay, I gotta I gotta pay attention to this because I have no choice. So it's the same thing here, right? Like we can't possibly get to retirement, get to setting ourselves up. Maybe you want to do this for your kids or, you know, their kids, whatever it is, right? Like we can't possibly be doing this stuff uh, if if we're not taking care of uh, ourselves and starting to build that out now. Compound interest is like the ninth wonder of the world. Uh, I firmly believe this as well, but um, uh, uh, Albert Einstein said it as well. So uh, we're on. A, we're all on the same page there. Like compound interest is uh, is crazy because the earlier you start it, the better off you are, right? So that's my whole spiel on why this stuff matters. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about the vehicles. So I didn't really know how to break this down because I mean, technically we could break this down into vehicles and tools. So the vehicles, for the most part, are like IRAs and four hundred one ks. Those are the vehicles because we can put stuff inside of those. We can put equities inside of those. We can put stocks. Uh, bonds, you know, different different funds inside of that um, that basket or that vehicle, right? Whereas, you know, metals or or stocks themselves, they that's not really what those are there for, right? So, anyways, I guess you could break it down like that. The vehicles would be like your IRA products, your four hundred one ks, and the uh, and the tools and the things that we put inside of that would be these other things, right? And then obviously, real estate is completely separate from that. Uh, okay, so let's actually make. Can we make this uh, full screen and get rid of me? <clears throat> yeah. All right, cool. Let's get rid of me. You guys don't need to see me. Uh, let's just check chat. Cool. Uh, yeah. And then let me know in the chat if you guys got questions as we were, as we we're rolling here. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how, how I look at that. Uh, so let's start at the top. Interest rates. Interest rates and inflation is a huge topic right now. So why, why I even started thinking about making a video like this, which is a little bit outside of our wheelhouse. Like we're talking about credit cards and stuff. A lot of times people have a hard time relating like what does credit cards have to do with um have to do with uh you know interest rates and investing and stuff. Well, it's got everything to do with it. So, um yeah, that's that's why we're covering this. So, I, I originally started thinking about this is cuz obviously through 2022 it was a rough year of inflation. Through 2023 it's been a rough year of inflation and interest rates. Uh by the way, if you hear barking in the background, that is my bag. Uh, I got a couple of eggs and uh, so they might be barking as they go nuts. Okay. So yeah, uh, interest rates. Let's start there. What is interest rates? Interest rates is set from uh, essentially the federal board of governors, the Fed, okay, the, the bank bank. And so uh, they will set the interest rate based on what they're seeing in the economy, um, what GDP is looking like, what um, inflation is looking like, you know, a bunch of different factors. Okay. And they will set it based on that. And so if you look back in time, 
Well, we had record high or record high, record low amount of um, interest rate for a really long time. Like if we go to 10 year, right? We go to 10 year here. Um, you can see, look at this, like, and they call this lower bound. So this whole section here that you guys see, that's like zero. And then this whole section here that you see, that's like zero. And it's like years and years and years. Okay. What does that mean? <clears throat> it just means that they've got interest rates so low and that money is really cheap. When money's cheap, what happens? Well, uh, mortgages are cheap. HELOCs are cheap. Interest rate on your credit cards are cheap. It's very easy and cheap to get money because the banks are getting flooded with money. And so they're just pushing it out into the economy. And this usually leads to extreme uh, windows of growth, right? And this at, at the face value is a good thing, okay? But then things change. So if we go too far with printing money, it, it, we call it printing money, but they, they don't issue it like that. It's not like they're going to the printing press, printing this out, and then you know handing it out to uh, men in black suits, and they're going and giving it around to every single household. It doesn't work like that. It, get, it essentially gets allocated from the Fed, and then it gets distributed out to big banks. And these are like, you know, the top tier banks, Chase, Bank of America, et cetera. So anyway, um, they that, that's how that happens. When, when we get too much money going, then inflation starts to creep up. And we saw that happen on the back end of COVID, right? So inflation starts to creep up. Okay, got it. And then um, we had supply chain issues start to happen. And then the Fed eventually gets into this position to where it's been, the money's been too cheap for too long. And there's too much of it out there that they have to raise interest rates. When they raise interest rates, all the debt becomes harder to service. Why though? Because interest rates have gone up. So everything is more expensive. So the interest rate I'm paying on my credit card goes up. The interest rate you're paying on your mortgage goes up. Everything goes up. Well, your mortgage rate's locked in. So unless it's variable rate, which uh, you know a lot of those are. So anyways, that's, that's like your quick history lesson on uh, interest rates. So that's essentially what's happened over the last couple of years. Okay. And so right now where we're sitting interest rate wise is 5.5%. Now, everyone wants them, as soon as this happens, everyone wants them to immediately cut because markets will start pumping again and everything will be good again, right? Let's go back to the good old days. They can't do that. And then secondly is even if they were to cut right now, today, is it takes time for this to go out and like positively affect the market because when rates get cut, it does positively affect, especially equities, if that's what we're talking about, stocks, right? Um, it usually positively affects that. Whereas... Um, you know, when when the rates have been lower for a long time, you know, we started to see the same thing happen again. We started to see um, stocks pumping because everyone was hunting for yield because money was so cheap. Right. So uh, it's rough because savers usually get uh, people that like to save money usually get bent over the worst in cheap money. And uh, well, they start to get their payback when when money's expensive. But when money is so cheap, you know, it penalizes savers. And so it incentivizes spending. OK. And that's kind of the point of it, all right? Now, let's pivot into inflation because uh, I don't, I don't want to spend like a ton of time on this stuff and turn this into like a, a big thing. Um, okay, inflation rate is currently, what are we at? As of July, we are at 3.2%. We capped out at 9%. This is just one formula and one, um, I guess, one way of looking at CPI, okay? Consumer price index, which is inflation, okay? And <clears throat> the reason why I say that is because they, the, the Fed is constantly changing this. If we go back up here to inflation. The model itself is constantly changing uh, with what they use. So what we do today is actually different than um, last year. And that is different than how we did it in 2019. And all of that is different than how we did it in the 90s and the 80s. So here's a, here's a quick example. And this is older now because this has come way down. Um, so you could look at it as, yeah, we peaked at 9%, which is what the standard CPI was telling us, or we, we peaked at like 17%. It's kind of the same thing if you think about it. Um, and you guys can attest to this. We all can attest to this on the ground um, because the cost of, you know, eggs was went up like what, 40, 40 to 60 percent. You know, the cost of chicken went up. The cost of these goods went up more so than what inflation stated. And I think that was a big wake up call for a lot of people is because if you didn't understand inflation and how it erodes your purchasing power, you really got a crash course with, with what just happened. OK, and, and I think that's really, really valuable lesson. So. We can, again, choose to be a victim and blame big, bad government, or we can we can wise up and we can start to change a plan, uh, well, change our plan or make a plan. Because if you notice that you're you're in a tough spot, then we need to we need to do things differently, right? And so I guess that's that's the, the big point here. So anyways, I got a bunch, we've got a bunch of material on that page. I won't go into that. Uh, let's dive into the vehicles now, right? So the whole thing I was trying to do here is I was actually trying to 
I didn't put these in alphabetical order. You know, I uh, I just kind of put them in an order by my assumption of how known they are. So everyone kind of knows about savings accounts and CDs, metals, you know, stocks, things like that. So I kind of that's how I structured this. Um, yeah, there's there was that was the rhyme or reason behind it, right? All right, let's do a quick pulse check here before we move on. Uh, jump into chat. You guys with me? My audio good? Everything good? Let me know. Let me know. Let's just take a quick second. Let's take a break. Talk amongst yourselves. <clears throat> I will drink more coffee. Good? Okay. Uh, let's continue. Let me... Uh... My cam is like all over the place. I got a crappy camera, even though I've got a good camera that I usually shoot on for the videos that we do for you guys. All right, so here we go. Uh, this is actually just recently updated. So here's some quick data points for you. Top 1% of high yield. So HYSA, high yield savings account. That's what that means. Top 1% of those uh, right now uh, in the last 48 hours is 4.66%. Now the average, because again, this is like just regular savings accounts. Um, and high yield savings accounts. So the average of all that nationwide is 0.43%. Whereas the typical savings account that you would go and set up in your bank right now is like 0.1%, I think. Um, like that's what you would get. So it's trash. Uh, top 1% of money market accounts, which is right in there with the uh, savings accounts. I guess you could kind of put that in, a, in the realm of CDs as well. Um, but no lockup period is 4.49%. Uh, National average is 0.74%. Okay, top 1% of CDs pays 5.53%. Not bad, right? Um, average is 3.67%. So even if you didn't want to go and set up a whole new membership at a credit union to get that, you know, 7%, which we've seen recently, um, you could just go down the middle and get 3.67, which again, isn't horrible. But if we start to look at what inflation is, what interest rates are, you're not making money. Let me just be clear about that. Uh, you're not making money off of this at, this, at these rates, okay? Uh, but you are... You are essentially uh, protecting your purchasing power and um, and keeping cash close. That's kind of the point of this. So how big hitters use uh, savings or CD accounts is it's to stay relatively liquid because these are easy products to get in and out of. Um, and it's to make sure that they're not going backwards. They're not losing value on their money. They're they're staying as close to, I guess, you know, uh, face value of the uh, of the notes as possible, even though. I guess I could argue that you're still losing, but again, for, for sake of this, we'll just go with that, okay? And then CDs. So this is a certificate of deposit. A certificate of deposit or CD is a type of savings account offered by banks and credit unions. You generally, uh, you generally agree to keep your money in a CD without taking a withdrawal for a specified length of time. So how guys use this, guys and gals, uh, use this is they will structure out and they'll either have you know one by one hitting year after year after year so that as this thing gets rolling, they've always got money coming back in. So this allows them to have liquid capital to then go and allocate into real estate deals or just roll back into CDs, right? And again, you're making a nominal amount of money off of this. Like I said, you're really just trying to stop the erosion of your, your purchasing power. That's really what guys use this for, okay? So you could have just one CD set up per year and then expire Every 12 months, you could set up multiple, you could set it up at one at a six month, one at a 12 month, one at a 12, one at this, wh whatever you wanted to do. So I guess you you really just got to figure out how many CDs do you want coming out each year and then um, go from there. And all that's going to be based on how much um, how much money you're going to put in. Cool. All right. So that's that's um, CDs and uh, and high yield savings accounts. We'll briefly touch on metals. I don't really feel like I need to make the case for metals. Why? Why we hold metals? Um, I, I think that, um, I think going all in on one asset is always a mistake. Let me just say that as, as cleanly as I can. Um, that said, I think there's value in holding metals, physical metals though, take out the counterparty risk, take out the middleman, uh, hold it yourself, which adds risk, adds security risk. Now we got to talk about safes. Now we got to talk about possible protection, firearms at the household to, um, to protect my stuff. I understand all that. Um. I guess it's just, um, it's part of the course, right? Like if you're going to go through this, then it's like, now we got to talk about all these things. And this is what needs to be decided before you even get involved in this is that if you start to find yourself with a decent sized collection of any kind, whether it's art, whether it's, uh, you know, vintage video games, <laughs> you know, or, or metals, uh, you really start to have to think of security on the premise, uh, 
camera systems, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, we've got some, uh, we've got some cool stuff here, historical charts going back to 2000 on gold and silver. Uh, if you want to buy gold and silver, I think sticking with coins, American Eagles on both the gold and silver side is a safe play. Canadian Maple Leafs on the silver side as well. There's some Troy uh, ounce options too that, uh, that I've got listed here. And then the big thing that I wanted to point out is uh, this was given to us to, from Q in the community. So shout out to Q. Always dropping gems for us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. And um, yeah, it, it's a hugely discounted rate on an American Eagle one ounce gold coin. Um, it's one per household per address. So if if you've gotten it, great. If not, then you can go ahead and get that. And you're saving about, I don't know, 250 to maybe 500 on the uh, over the spot price. Cool. So let's keep it moving. I don't want to get too too lost on any one thing. Um, stocks. Well, let's let's actually let's jump into IRAs and and 401ks because then I want to come back to stocks and dividend stocks specifically. So IRAs, we've covered this in the past. Um, I've actually got a uh, a video that on most of the stuff that we'll be adding. Okay, and so this passes the napkin test. Uh, and so the napkin test is like this marketing thing, right? If you can't explain your idea on a napkin then uh, it's either a bad idea or you need to rework explaining it, right? Like uh, I remember back in the day, I I always just get invited out to um, like uh, Panera Bread and stuff like that. And uh, the guys were, you, you already knew what they wanted. They were pitching MLMs, right? And so one of the tests that I would get, uh, I'd get them to do to see if they actually knew what they were talking about is I'd get them to write it out for me on a napkin. So anyways, there's the napkin for you with Roth IRAs. Because again, this is one of those things that I, I think is overly complicated. I think people look at, at IRAs and they they think it's scary and it's not okay so there is actually four types um, there's a traditional Roth rollover and a backdoor which a backdoor is really just a traditional until you break out of it and then it's a backdoor into a Roth so that's all that is uh, most people want to focus on a Roth IRA reason why is because it's pre-tax so it only works off a of W-2 income 1099 income and so it grows tax-free tax-free growth baby because uh, it's already been taxed. So we can max this thing out right now in 2023 with 6,500 a year, which I don't know, that's like just over 500 bucks a month, right? Something like that. Um, or my math sucks. You let me know in the comments. And, um, and or 7,500 if you're over 50, okay? Per household is you can only, uh, as a single person, you can only be making 153,000 or less, okay? Married, 228,000. So if you break over that, you are disqualified for having a Roth, okay? And you got to talk to your, obviously, let me let me take a step back here. Talk to your uh, wealth planning um, team or your accountant, your CPA, okay? I'm not licensed and uh, I'm an idiot on the internet making videos, so don't listen to me. All right. I should have said that in the beginning. Um, yeah, so you, you, can, uh, you can pull out your gains uh, before 59.5 years of age, penalty-free for the following reasons. You see them on the screen, disabilities, education expenses, first-time home purchase, birth adoption expenses, or health insurance if unemployed. Like I said, this has got to be pre-tax income or uh, excuse me, post-tax income. <laughs> so uh, W-2 or 1099 income, okay? And so what's the whole point of this vehicle, right? The whole point of this vehicle, an IRA, a 401k is a long-term gain. It is for our retirement. So it's 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road is the play here, right? That's that's how you got to look at this. So this could be its own portfolio on its own over here in the corner, collecting dust, and we're just paying into it every single month. And, it, and the um, it's actually better if you could just kind of like forget about it and, and not put pressure on it to perform and not think about, oh man, I made a mistake by buying this stock and putting this in it or, or doing that or doing this, right? If you could just like set this off to the side and completely forget about it for a rainy day. And a rainy day is like, you know, like I said, 30, 40 years down the road. So you can pull this out for retirement or you can do things with gifting it, trusts, different entity structures to move this on to other family members. It's entirely up to you. But what you can put in it, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, okay? So now we start to think, okay, now let's come back to dividend stocks. <clears throat> there are stocks out there. I don't know if you know this or not, but they pay you a dividend, okay? Uh, it's actually like their sole intention, their sole purpose almost is to pay out dividends, okay? Similar to a REIT. A REIT is designed to pay out. They have to pay out a certain amount of, um, like a high amount of their earnings, which we'll cover in just a second. Um, but dividend stocks. So, and where we want to, where would we want to focus our attention? Like on a company that's probably just starting to pay out dividends or a company that's been paying out dividends increasingly over the last 25 years, 
That sounds even better, doesn't it? So that's what's called an aristocrat. An aristocrat dividend uh, stock is there's over 62 or 67. I got 65 on this. Let's double check this list. Let me just let me just check my math here. Well, that's 2022's list, and there were 65. So here's a list right here on uh, usnews.com. Check it out. Mm, here it is right here. So look at some of this. Look at some of like the years of how long they've been paying out dividends. 3M, 64 years. Like that's insane. Now these aren't super high amounts, right? Some of them are. Like there are high yield dividend companies. Higher risk. Uh, higher risk comes with the higher uh, dividend yield or payout. Though keep that in mind. Okay. So again, we're talking IRAs. Probably your best bet is just keep it sleepy, right? So just kind of set it off to the side. Forget about it. So that's like uh, VOO, VTO, uh, VTI. Excuse me. Uh, what would be another one? QQQ. Okay. Th those are like your Vanguard that uh, ETFs that represent like bulk markets, the bond market, the you can even get some that represent the whole real estate market, the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ. Those are the things you want to stick with, right? Because if we just uh, look at the last 100 years of the S&P 500, what do you notice about that chart? Like you, could, you can chart this anywhere. You can go to TradingView, you can go to you know a free stock charting thing, a website. And what do we notice if we just zoom out and we look at like a monthly or yearly chart? Since the very beginning, the very inception of the stock market, what do we notice about it? It's just going straight up. Like, yes, there's there's pullbacks. Yes, there's world wars on that chart. There is presidents on that chart. There's Trump on that chart. There's COVID on that chart. There's everything and everyone is on that chart. But if you notice, gradually what happens over a long enough period of time, it's going up. So unless that completely goes away, I mean, again, we're we're like we're making very broad sweeping. Uh, simple assumptions here. I hope I hope you're on board with me with with this. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, here's some math. Yeah, VOO, VTI, VEU. That's the other one I was thinking of. Um, so those are some options for you. So here is a simple formula if you wanted to actually live off dividends. Which this is another YouTuber category in and of itself is living off of dividends. So you need seventy five. Let's say you needed seventy five thousand per year to live off of. Right, dividend by APY. Let's say it's five percent. That equals one point five million. You would need to invest originally. Um, here's a breakdown of what do I got here? 40,000 per year. Oh, that generate 40,000 per year. There you go. All right. So there's some, there's some simple math for you in terms of how much you need and the average yield. If you're looking for that, which I think most guys are looking for three to 4% in this uh, range right here. So that that's over a million bucks to uh, start to get that sort of performance. Now me saying that, 100,000 here, millionaire, it immediately removes so many people from the conversation because they think, well, I don't have that. So let me just not do that. Let me go back to buying the watches. Let me go back to buying the Louis Vuitton. Stop it. Okay. We build this up over time. Remember what I said in the beginning, compound interest. Okay. So it's like all this stuff. The reason why people are so opposed to, to listening to this and understanding this is just because we weren't born and raised understanding or knowing this stuff. I wasn't. I know a lot of a lot of uh, people in our community, a lot of listeners. It's the same way. Like middle class America was never trained on this stuff. It was always it was always talked about and and shrouded in mystery as like this unattainable thing too. It's not. It's actually pretty simple stuff. Okay, so we got we got to move past that and we got to reprogram here a little bit on some of this stuff. All right. So that's have we have we properly covered IRAs? You guys good with that? <clears throat> Yes. Okay. So a couple of great points here is you can, and, and I don't know if you want to do this, but this is an option you. Uh, okay. So let's talk about a few different things here. We've got, we've got Roth IRAs and traditionals. Traditionals are, um, traditionals are taxed. Okay. Uh, just like trading and like holding stocks in your Red Bull, Red Bull, your Webull account or your uh, Robinhood account are taxed regularly. Okay. There's, there's no discount on this. There's nothing on this. Um, you're, you're just paying regular tax rate on this. You can do that with some of your portfolio, all of your portfolio. It's entirely up to you. Vehicles like a Roth allow you to step outside of that and grow tax free. And like I said, we're, we're compounding that over years. You can actually start to, on some brokerage accounts, on some sites, you can actually start to take loans off of all kinds of different vehicles. We can take it off uh, loans off of 401ks. We can essentially, we're, we're putting that up as collateral is what I'm saying. Um, we can do that with our regular portfolio. Uh, Robinhood even allows this now. I think that you're going to get yourself into trouble doing stuff like that, especially if you're just starting to uh, maybe 
Okay, I'll say it like this. If you're just starting to grow your portfolio, this might be a, a good idea to take on risk like that. But the longer you've held that, unless it's an emergency, I would say that it's probably bad to take on risk like that. Unless you're you're taking on such a low amount loan to value and the the value of the you know of the account, the 401k, whatever is is super high, right? But that is an option for you. And then also too, like for, for those of you who want to start trading, and I know that um this is this is like a trend that that happens, right? Crypto is the trend, then it's NFTs, now it's options. It seems like all the um everyone wants to talk about trading options and like it's some easy thing. Okay, trading, trading um in general is extremely hard. It's not hard because markets are complex and nobody knows how to crack the code. It's hard because it's a game of managing your emotions. But you can also qualify for trader status, which we cover uh, cover right here. So investing in trader status. There's all kinds of other goodies in here. Yes, you got to pay to get access to this. Okay, um, If you pay to get access to the Discord, which is $29.99 a month, you get this along with three other courses. Okay, So I think $29.99 a month is really cheap, but maybe I'm crazy. Uh, that's like... A dollar a day. Okay. So, anyways, uh, back back on point here is you know you can actually it, it's really hard to get trader status, but if you were a full time trader and you went maybe through a prop firm and you won some prop firm um, contests and you actually got funded, right? Then you could actually start to look at um, what it would take to to get what's called trader status. Um, outside of that, though, like regular guys like you and me, no. Um, also, another point. So, shout out to USA. Thanks in the comments. Is uh, you can rebalance your portfolio over time on M1 Finance, <clears throat> which there'll be a link in the description if you want to support us, um, they will allow you to rebalance your, they call it a pie chart or your pie. And so you can change your pie. You can rebalance the percentages. Like let's say I had Berkshire Hathaway, uh, VOO, VTO, uh, VTI in, in, my, in my pie. You could rebalance like what percentage goes to each one, 25, 50, et cetera. And then rebalance that over time um, based on maybe changes that you're seeing in the market. So you, you could do whatever you want, right? You can do whatever you want. All right, 401ks, let's touch on that. And then uh, we'll get back into, we'll jump into bonds. And then I think from there, we'll kind of we'll kind of take questions and maybe wrap up. Everyone's still on, on board with me? Everyone's still there? Holding on? Holding on for dear life? All right, cool. We got a couple of people in the uh, green screen. I'll wait to bring you guys on. Just uh, stay patient. Uh, but yeah, you're going to, just so you're crystal clear, uh, Hunda and Eddie, you guys, if I bring you on, you're going to be on the stream. So I just want to make sure you guys know that. All right, uh, 401ks, here we go. So we covered all the details of like age, max contribution, all that with IRAs. Let's attempt to do the same thing here uh, with 401ks. So we got traditional, safe harbor, simple. Uh, I think there's a couple other like, I don't know, different ways of doing it as well. Here's all you really need to look at is the max contribution that you can put per year. Um, Self-directed is... Am I going to post a recording of this? Yes, sir. Uh, I will make sure that there's a recording on the channel. Max contribution is 22000 under 50 for a self-directed or what's called a solo 401k. Uh, you can invest in either traditional tax-deductible bucket or a Roth tax-free bucket. Uh, can't do Roth component if you already have a Roth opened up. So you can open up a Roth IRA just about anywhere, by the way. And opening up a Roth or a 401k, it's actually really easy. Which again, I think that's another thing that stops people is they think like, Oh, I got to get a brokerage account and I got to do all this stuff. Well, if you wanted to be like, if you wanted to set this up in like five minutes and be super lazy about it, you could go to somewhere like M1 Finance. And I'm telling you, you can set this thing up in like five minutes. Okay. I did it as a test just to see how quick it'd be. And it was less than five minutes that I set it up. All right. Um, yeah. Contributions are at the bottom. Under 50, 22, 5,000. That's pre-tax and Roth employee, employee and employer. I won't get super deep in the woods here. This is what you need to be talking about with your estate planner or whatever you're doing there. 66,000 under 50, 50 plus, we open up to add an additional 6,500 and 7,500 respectively. It's just another vehicle. That's all this is. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's do, eh, let's do I-bonds next. Let's jump into this. So what is an I-bond? An I-bond is a savings bond. Uh, which essentially is meant to protect you from inflation. So when inflation hit record high numbers back in, when was this? October, I think we shot this video, August, September, October of 2022. At that point, when we shot this video and we were talking about it in a Discord all the time. So you had an opportunity to get involved in this. They were paying out 9.62%. That's crazy. 9.62%, okay? Now, next question people ask, how much can you put in? Up to 10,000 per year, electronic, 5,000 paper with a tax refund. 
That's per year, per social security number, per EIN. So there's, there's, you can get slick with this. You can get slick. That's all I'll say. Um, currently, I bonds are paying out 4.3% until uh, October 31st. So everyone who buys any volume of I bond, which you can start with just $25 between now and uh, October 31st, you will get 4.30%. Um, it's a fixed interest rate and they close these windows. So it's, it's open for a period of time and then they close the window and then they re, um, essentially recalibrate the, um, the APY that you're going to get. And then they roll that out for a period of time, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So uh, expect this to probably drop again. Um, you know, I would say it's definitely not going to go up, you know, unless inflation spikes or something like that. Um, but yeah, this is a great vehicle to use, a great tool that you could stack in. I hope you're starting to see like this fits in with the CDs, with the savings accounts, with the IRAs, all of this, right? It all starts to fit together and talk together. Now, regular bonds. Okay, what are regular bonds? They're issued by governments or corporations. Um, and essentially, they they want to raise money, so they issue out a bond. And you buying a bond is a bed a, a bet or a hedge against uh, stock market volatility. Okay, so if we wanted to look at stock market volatility, we can go to ticker VIX. That is VIX. That's the volatility S and P index. Okay, and when that thing's going up, what does that mean? That means there's volatility in the market. Okay, so. Uh, what you what you normally see is when there's a ton of volatility, everyone rushes over to bonds. And the normal, the most popular bond is right here, U.S. Treasuries. Okay, they're considered the safest possible bond investment. Bonds act similar to any other investment vehicle. The longer I um, I invest in, right? I think there's like 10, 20, 30 year, right? The longer I invest in that, the higher yield I get. Just like the longer CD. Uh, that I choose, the more money I get. Okay, the longer I hold my dividend stocks, the more money I get. Right, the the more I have uh, compound interest working for me, the more money I get. Okay, so bonds are essentially like a, a fixed um, fixed income investment. All right, and we go through all the nuts and bolts. There's government agency bond, uh, bonds, municipal bonds, corporate bonds, which I would never touch. Probably never. Um, even though that's a strong statement. I'd probably never touch corporate bonds just because it's, it's too high risk to me. And a lot of that falls into the high, uh, into the junk bond category, right? So anyways, that's bonds. Uh, I bonds recovered. Yeah. Okay, let's touch on REITs. Maybe we'll touch on a couple more of these and then do questions. If you got questions, just drop it in the chat, right? <clears throat> okay, uh, REITs, real estate investment trusts. So uh, what is the number on this? They're actually, yeah, that's what it is. REITs are required by law to pay out 90% of their profits yearly back out to investors as dividends. So that's pretty crazy, right? And um, yeah, like you can you can get involved in REITs in your uh, in your regular Robinhood account. Um, you can get involved in some of this in these other vehicles that I that I gave out in these other buckets and, and options that you've got there. Um, you can do whatever you like with these, right? So here's a full breakdown of those in terms of equity REITs, private REITs, excuse me, et cetera, et cetera. Performance, I gave breakdown here. Cool. Um, yeah, just another vehicle to add to the arsenal. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, there's not a whole lot here. Because uh, a lot of these, a lot of these companies have kind of changed. You know, like Lending Club used to be in there. There used to be these uh, other marketplaces that would be peer-to-peer, -peer that would offer peer-to-peer -peer lending. But I think because the government kind of changed how all that's classified. So the only thing you can kind of get away with now is crowdfunding. But for some reason, it just, I don't know, it just didn't stick. The only one that I know of that exists still that's like reputable is Prosper. Um, and they pay out, uh, what is this? Average historical yearly return of 5.7%. Another option that you've got there. And I don't think you, I don't think you need to be accredited uh, for crowdfunding. Like if you wanted to actually jump on a crowdfunding platform and support a, you know, a Kickstarter or whatever, you do not need to be accredited for that. And the reason why is because that, that kind of sidesteps the laws and the rules. Um, so you can be unaccredited. Uh, being an accredited investor is something completely different. You have to prove and show basically $250,000 of earnings or assets over the last two years. Um, so that's out of the question for a lot of people. All right, cool. Uh, that's pretty much it. Like <laughs> that's, that's your crash course into um, into the investment vehicles and the tools. So let's now let's kind of cover let's cover something here.
there's a few things in here that I think are really, really valuable. My investment thesis and how I look at things. Let's just quickly cover that. How I tend to look at things is um, I look at it, uh, the buckets in terms of portfolio differently, I think, than a lot of people. I'm not looking at this as like one big portfolio. These are all, you could just say these are all pieces of one big one, or they're just all separate vehicles, all separate portfolios uh, executing and doing their job. Okay. So one of them is like that long-term bucket, the IRA bucket. Okay. And that is for retirement and beyond. Okay. And then we come all the way down and there's also a bucket for day trading. And so we got to, we got to think about that because there's different tax implications. There's different, you know, different strategy that we're doing, you know, in terms of uh, how you're, you're buying and selling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So all of that needs to be taken into consideration. And then to go back even a step further, like what USA is saying in the chat is you got to consider what kind of investor you want to be. I think I've got that here. Let me start here. Let me pull this up. There you go. Things to note, risk tolerance, time horizon, focus on growth if you're younger and dividend. Uh, once you grow your stack and get older, right? Risk. There's all kinds of risk tolerance questionnaires as well. Look, Vanguard even has one. I got the link for it right there. Um, going through these, these tests, are interesting, I guess. I, I don't know how valuable they are because your risk tolerance right now, as you're chilling in your air conditioned room, you know, drinking a soda, listening to me, is going to be different than in the middle of COVID, isn't it? Then in the middle of, you know, something else that might come up in the middle of like, oh crap, I'm barely surviving because inflation's so high and my purchasing power has been eroded, you know? Um, so you gotta, you gotta take all that into consideration, right? Uh, I didn't talk about crypto. I actually forgot about crypto. Do we want to cover that really quick? I don't know how deep I want to go, um, but uh, you know, I've been consistently trading crypto, I guess you could say, since 2017. I got involved right before the, the big bull run happened. I made uh, a lot and then lost a lot. <laughs> lost like, I don't know, 220, 230-ish thousand dollars um, just on that dump because I, I had no clue what was going on. What was, what was funny about that is like that, that's what spun me out and and got me to pivot and dive into the rabbit hole of um of mac like macro finance and macroeconomics because i didn't even know how inflation and interest rates worked i i was pretty clueless i'll be honest um before that point and so like that that triggered me to completely go off the deep end because i i was pissed and i didn't want that to happen again cryptocurrency it is supposed to be a decentralized um peer-to-peer -peer money vehicle that's it. That's why that, that's why Bitcoin was created, which Bitcoin was the first big one, but there was there was um, others before it, right? And the big thing was is that as soon as they got big, like these groups were being infiltrated um, by government agencies. They they were there was like all kinds of it was the wild wild west back then. There was all kinds of stuff happening because they were so desperate to stop this from coming to light. I've been fortunate enough to meet some of the people that were involved in some of these earlier projects. Peter Thiel was involved in one of them as well, um, which is why he's such a big proponent now of uh, of Bitcoin. But there was a very concentrated effort of destroying this thing before it even got up off the ground, which we see that historically. Unfortunately, I, I, I really don't know why there's such a fear around growth and uh, competition, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess when you're talking about the entire money system of the world, I guess, yes, you have to kind of guard that differently. Um <clears throat> So yeah, cryptocurrency was supposed to be this outside the bank for the bank list or those who were just kind of sick of, um, of using the banking system to be able to transact. It was created in 2009 is when the white paper rolled out and when Satoshi actually launched it and sent out the first Bitcoin to the handful of people on his email list. And um, it was on the back end of the 2009 great financial crisis. And so that, that triggered that. So again, I think that's a good thing personally. Um, I know that, you know, bankers and, and people with a lot of money, they'd rather these things not change and that they, they just continue to be the same, but you know, life changes, everything changes every single day. There's always an evolution. And I think that, uh, competition spawns, uh, innovation. And I think that that's a good thing. So, you know, crypto in, in a nutshell, I think is a good thing where it's at now. It's very unfortunate to see, um, where it's at now is not even where it was a year ago. It's not even what it was a year ago. It is, it is very much a a cesspool right now. Um, and it's a cesspool of uh, companies and bad actors trying to mine data, trying to force, you know, force users into giving up, um, whether it's KYC, AML, just, you know, IP addresses. They're essentially trying to, uh, because of pressure, they're trying to box everybody out. And what I mean, everybody, I mean, the United States. 
So because regulation is so up in the air, right? Like the F, uh, the SEC doesn't even know what what a security is and what isn't. Okay, um, they're so full of shit, it's not even funny. So they're they're up, they're down, and the recent XRP um, case kind of speaks to hopefully a precedence that's been set that now will allow a better ruling against what is the security and what isn't. Okay, because they go off of what's called a Howey test, and um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these projects fail the Howey test or pass it, which essentially means that they are a security and a lot of them don't. And so they're trying to just say that Bitcoin and ETH get a pass and everybody else is a security. That's, that's the battle that's going on right now. And in between that, there's ETFs being uh, released, which just kind of reminds me of when futures were released in December of 2017, right after that, the market crashed. Uh, um, <clears throat> so I don't know if we're going to see that again, but I will say that, uh, yeah, it's man, there's a lot going on in the crypto space and it's not as free. I will say this. It's not as free and sovereign as anonymous as you might think it is. So don't go thinking that, you know, the minute that you sign up for a crypto account that it's super anonymous and nobody's going to be able to track down how you're spending your money and that that's how you somehow evade taxes. Right. Because I know that's a common question. How do I evade taxes? I'm not here to tell you how to do that. I have no clue. Um, and you should talk to somebody else for that. Cool. Um. Can you talk about bots? Uh, no. Yeah, I don't want to get into crypto, like crypto trading bots. No. But we can talk about that in the Discord if you jump in there. All right, cool. Honda, you still want to come on stream? And Eddie G, let's drop you in here. Eddie. Mm, I think your audio. Yo. Okay, Eddie, fix your audio. I'll bring you back on. All right, Hunda, let's bring you on. You got to unmute yourself if you want to chat. And if anyone wants to jump on in the uh, from the Discord, just jump on in. I gave you the link. And shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for, you know, just real quick, everyone sharing and, um, you know, helping the channel grow. Like we're over 15,000 subscribers. You know, let's, let's keep it going, right? Like we're just getting started, baby. Let's take it to 100. Let's take it to a million. Because there's... Like what this has taught me and reminded me of maybe is that there's a lot of education that needs to happen still. And uh, just like me growing up, I, I was clueless. I had no, I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't know about these opportunities, these vehicles. And um, it's the same thing. It's the same thing now. Like there's a whole younger generation and even unfortunate older generation of people that have no clue what all this stuff is and how to use it. Right. All right. Cool. All right. Let me just jump in here. Oh, cool. Yeah, I did give out some wrenches. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and then we got some members. All right, I didn't know that's what that meant. I'm kind of slow when it comes to that. Um, all right. Any questions? Any last minute questions? Honda, I got you on. You just need to unmute yourself. Uh, Eddie, just let me know. You guys can jump into private chat. Here it is. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and ping it now. Here is private chat. If you want to just tell me in private chat. All right, you're unmuted, Honda. What's up, man? Or lady? Lady. <laughs> Lady. Oh, oh. Just, <laughs> I'm learning. I don't know why I make that assumption. All right, cool. Welcome. It's How okay. It's okay. It's fine. I, I'm just learning. So thank okay. you for everything. I've learned a lot tonight. Thanks. Good, good, good. I like that. I like that. That's the whole, that's the whole point. You know, like, uh, I assume you're in the Discord because you got this link. But, you know, I, I asked yes. recently, like, what else could we be doing? And I don't know if you noticed, but like a, a common topic was like, hey, Talk about stocks, talk about bonds. And I was like, well, you know, I've been sitting on this video idea since like literally quarter four of 2022. So I was like, all right, let's just do this. So that's that's how this all came about. And I was like, you know what? I was kind of feeling lazy to try and like structure this into a video and not have it be like an hour long video. So I was like, okay, well, let's just do a stream. <laughs> so here we are. But that's the whole story to it. All right, cool. Do you got any questions for me or you just coming in and give us, showing us some love? Not right now. I just, my dog is barking and not. Oh, cool. What kind of, well, if you can tell me what kind of dog you got. I got a golden. Scottish and, uh, Terrier. Scottish Terrier. Cool. I got a golden. I got three dogs. Golden, uh, a beagle and a mix. Like a, a serious mix, like a mix of everything. Yeah, they are a trip. They are an absolute trip because the golden is still a baby. He's like not even six months old and he's huge already. He's got huge feet. So it's, it's going to be something else with these, with these three. I'm telling you now.
All right, cool. Well, I appreciate you jumping on. I'm glad that you picked uh, picked something up from this. I mean, the Discord itself, like, I just wish people could really see it, right? Because it's um, there's so much there that you could sponge up. And maybe it's just that I'm getting older and I realize how to how to really leverage a community like that or how to leverage you know people and access that way. I don't know. Um, but to me, when I look at the Discord and the people that we've got in there and the information being shared and just the caliper of person, I'm just like, man, people are insane not to get in here. And I know that sounds really, really biased and stuff because it's obviously me, it's my thing. Um, but yeah, that's just how I feel about it. But you know, people don't know what they don't know, unfortunately. And True. there's so much information to to learn and it's just great having this resource. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Because like, I'll, I'll kind of drop this real quick for, for anyone listening is it becomes overwhelming when you've got access to so much. So one thing that I'm constantly doing with buckets or, or areas, right? Let's, we're, we're kind of, we got all these pieces on the field and we're pushing, we're trying to push them down the field. Okay. And um, one, one thing that I do is I'll deep dive a, a subject like here on this stream, we just went deep into all this stuff. Cool. Take this, absorb it. Let it soak in for a couple of days. Don't, don't try and come back to this right away and, and rush this. Let it soak in for a couple of days over the weekend, then come back, touch it again. Then wait like a month, wait a couple of months, come back, touch it again. And the more times that you like, go away, come back, go away, come back. Um, it starts to soak in. And, and before you know it, it's just kind of like you're, you're starting to like now have the talking points. Oh yeah, uh, Roth IRA, yeah, that's 6,500 per year. I can do there. Okay, savings accounts, I can do this, right? Like you've got pieces of it memorized. And then what starts to happen is because our subconscious is way smarter than we give it credit for, our subconscious starts to turn this into something. It starts to create an idea out of this, a concept, a strategy out of this. So if you just keep touching this stuff over a long enough period of time, it will integrate and you'll get the, the, the master plan. We don't need to like sit and like stress out about this or like, you know, um, try and like squeeze this out in one, one hour session or something. Just give it time, let it soak in. And, um, and this stuff really starts to make sense. And then if, if we start to now layer that over a long enough timeline, we start to actually change our life. And that's the things that I, I wish more people would, would understand is that changing your life is a one degree difference, right? But over a long enough period of time, just like a ship, right? We change it one degree and we end up at a completely different outcome than where we were at and where we started. And it's the same thing here. All of the knowledge, all the information, it all compounds in the same way that our money does. We just have to stick with it. We have to give it enough time. You have to act as though it's just a matter of time before these things make sense. We're crushing it. We're making a ton of money. We're rich, whatever it is. You have to act as it's, it's just when, not if, not, oh, gee, do I deserve it? You know, we, we, bring, we start to bring religion into it. We start to do all this goofy shit instead of just knowing deep down that it's just a matter of when, not if. You know what I mean? But anyways, shout out to, <laughs> shout out to Joe. Yeah. Shout out to GW, man. Uh, one of the OGs from the community that's constantly giving, 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 giving. Uh, to where sometimes I'm just like, man, this guy's this guy's too much. I feel insanely guilty about a lot of people in the community because they they give so much. It makes me, you know, want to do something in return. <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day I'll be able to give back uh, to them and give them a proper thank you. We'll see. But anyways, uh, Eddie, you want me to let, let's drop you back in here? I got you on. You can unmute if you like. Nope. Okay. Dropped out. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, let's cut it. And uh, the recording will be up on the channel. Maybe we'll dice this up into, into some pieces and into uh, some videos and upload them on the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this stream. We'll try and do more more often, right? All right. Wait, here's Eddie. Eddie, I got yeah, I'm you. I'm sorry. I got myself locked up. I apologize. Hey, no worries. No worries. Great, What's up, man? man. All your information you've been sharing is like it's just a wealth of information. Sometimes you have to go back to just say, wow. It's something that you missed, you know, it's just so much stuff and it's yeah. so updated and it's so funny. Like after you post something, it's copied in about, I think in about a couple of minutes, <laughs> a yeah. terrible version, of course, yeah, but yeah, it yeah. is what it is, you know? Yeah, that's, that's how it goes, man. That's the content game right now. Uh, yeah. yeah. I um, just wanted to share something with everybody in the group, which I really worked out for me. For those okay. that want to put a primary on their credit without a hard pull, sure. if you do, if you do a firm, it okay. will give you a primary. What happens yeah, I is, it. It, yes, I, I, I've done it. How much experience? I, I've done that play. 
because um, a firm, are they doing, are they reporting it as a primary for every single a firm deal that you do or just mm -hmm. one? No, they, they actually, if after, after like you pay for three months, okay, they will, they report it. Um, so they report, if I'm correct, because I had it, they just report it to one bureau, but it's not a hard, in other words, once you apply, you just put your phone number in and it's okay. automatic. You can go to Staples, any store, even airlines. Okay. So they you're talking you about going to affirm.com and, and signing up there versus doing it on the website during checkout. You're talking about going no, to no. You can do both. Firm. In other words, once okay. the once they have you in their circle, once you just put in your number that you're looking to get, you want to get this product because that happens a lot with Amazon. If you see okay. Amazon, you actually can just put in that one of the options is do you want to do a firm? So you okay. click on a firm, and then they're going to ask you for you know if you're already in their system by your telephone number, they know who you are. So yeah. then they'll tell you it's approved. And then they'll put you on as either 0% or very low interest rate. Because I, I, I did it with Priceline to build up my primary. So you get a primary. Nice. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So because I just heard about changes earlier this year with how it's reporting, et cetera, et cetera. So I wasn't sure. So this is a great. No, they don't, re they don't report on a monthly. They report after it's closed. Got it. Got it. Um, okay. So it shows up as a primary and then it shows up in terms of the dollar amount uh, based on the total dollar amount. Value Correct. That you what total, that on, total right? that you use. Correct. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. And yeah. then, so that will show up each one. Every time you do that, it shows up as, as a, another primary. Correct. Right. Cool. Exactly. And okay. then you just, and, and the good, the great thing about it is every time you apply, like you can apply for anything. It's a soft pull. They'll tell you yes or no. But you, it's just not going to be a hard pull, and it doesn't ever show up. They pull TransUnion. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, I think some of our data is uh, outdated on that too. I think I had it as pulling Experian because this is from like years ago. So interesting, good to know. Yes. Perfect. All right, glad for sharing, man. But thank you so much for sharing up in the groups. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. All right, awesome, dude. Yeah, see ya. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for jumping on. We're gonna we're gonna cut it and wrap it there. <clears throat> Again. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new watching this uh, or turn on notifications if you aren't getting notified, right? Because notifications actually account for such a small amount of our views and volume on videos. So just double check, click that little button, make sure that you are actually um, got the bell notification on for notifications and you will get them. Okay. Good night, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Good night.